Hello and welcome to another episode of the iPad Lettering Show. My name is Karen, I'm from iPad Lettering, bringing you the best tips and tricks about everything iPad related. In today's episode, I'm going to show you all the new features of Procreate 4.3. Yes, Procreate have done it again. They've come up with some amazing new features and I'm going to show you all of them. The two big features really are the text feature. Yes, you can now use text in Procreate. It's really, really cool. Then the next big feature I'm going to show you is the ability to share layers. And at first glance, that might actually not sound that cool, but I'll show you how you can make animated GIFs directly out of Procreate, super cool. And then there's also a few sort of smaller features. One of them is solo visibility of a layer. While that doesn't sound as cool, it's actually really useful. And then also we have some new blend modes and we have a new pressure streamline setting uh, for our brush settings, so very cool. Now let's get started with text. It's a super cool feature and a feature that has been requested many, many times and um, now it's available. All right, so now let me show you how you can use this feature. So I've got a canvas here already. Now let's add some text by tapping on the actions icon and then you see here there's a new menu item called add text. So tap on that. So now we have the basic text editor pop up and then you can type your text. So let's say good morning. And you can also resize um, the screen here while you're doing this and resize the boundaries. Now to change the text, the fonts, the size and so on, there's a button here that says edit style and you can toggle between the keyboard and the edit style by using this icon here. This is the keyboard or then you can go back to edit style like this as well. So to change the size, we have a size slider here, which is super simple. Just slide it up and make it really big. All right. And we can still move the text around like this. And then we have here all the um, normal kerning, tracking, leading and baseline tools that you would find in a program such as Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. Although having said that, um, the, the tool here is reasonably basic. It's not as full featured as you would find on a desktop application, but this is a first version of a text tool. So I don't think we can expect that much, but still um, it's reasonably powerful. So kerning and tracking, you'll see um, there's two different sliders and at first glance, they don't seem to be able to do different things. So if we slide this backwards and forwards, you can see, oh yep, my letters become further apart or get closer together. And then this one seems to do the same thing. But the reason why there's two sliders is because kerning is meant to um, change the distance between individual letters, whereas tracking is meant to change the distance for the whole word. So the way that this works is that you, let's say we change the tracking and just add a little bit more space in between all our words. But then we might want to have um, the distance between these two O's a bit closer so that we can go in and adjust the kerning for just these two letters. So you can see that the distance of all the other letters stays the same, but I can adjust the kerning of individual letters like this. Or maybe I might want to do this one as well. And then let's say we've decided that this is too much. So we can select all and select the whole and then change this. So this gives you the ability to adjust the kerning individually between different letters, but also adjust the tracking of the whole word. And then we have leading. So leading is the, the distance between um, the different lines is very easy so we can just adjust it like this maybe and then we also have baseline shift this is the the same as you would normally find in um, in any other uh, text editor program you can do individual letters as well right, select this and then we can shift this up and down and this is how this works so these are sort of basic manipulations for your text. Um, and then you have also the alignments here. Yeah, so you can lift the line, right the line, and um, adjustify. 
and then we have the ability to underline a word so you need to actually select the word for this to work so double tap selects the word and then you can select the whole sentence and underline it and this is a cool feature as well here which is outline so we can outline the word um, the only thing you won't be able to do is set the thickness of the outline. This is, um, in my opinion, a bit of shame because it would be really nice to make this line maybe a little bit thinner or depending on the font that you've chosen, maybe make, make it a little bit thicker. But unfortunately, that's not possible. But then we can also um, uppercase the whole sentence like this. So this is pretty cool. So I'm going to turn this off again. I'm going to turn that one off as well. Now, um, what is really cool, of course, is the ability to change fonts. So you can see there is a, a number of fonts um, already installed on my iPad. So I can choose any of these fonts that I, um, I already have that I might like to use. But then I also have the ability to import a new font. And that's just very cool. And it's right here. So we've got the import font uh, button here. So we tap on that. Now this brings me um, up to my iCloud drive and I've got a folder here where I've got a number of fonts already. So let's import Happy New Day. Happy New Day is actually a font that I, I made myself. So let's see what that looks like in Procreate. So now I um, have it imported and there it is. So here is my font and it's pretty cool. So again, I can now uh, adjust the kerning and the tracking because this is font I made myself even though I spent a considerable amount of time getting the kerning right um, I might have not uh, adjusted every single letter so now I can change that and adjust it back to the way I want but I think this actually looks pretty good all right now let's say we are happy with our text here so we tap done so now one of the things you'll notice is when we open up the layers panel is that we have got this A here. So what this means is this is still text, this hasn't been rasterized yet, and you can also tap on the uh, layer thumbnail, and you'll see here that the edit text menu item is still available. So you tap on that, and this will get you back into edit mode. Now, one of the things with Procreate is that Procreate is a bitmap based application. It's not a vector application. So while we have the text still editable here, at some stage the text will get rasterized. So what I recommend you do, if you want to keep this editable, maybe take a copy of the text and then maybe turn the layer off so that if you want to change the text, you can still do that. But when you make modifications to this layer, such as um, let's say distort the layer or any type of modification that is um, not just changing the text you'll notice that there is now a red bar coming up that will let you know that the text has now been rasterized so now if we look back at our layers panel you can see now um, there's a preview of the layer it doesn't have the A anymore and this is how we can tell that this has now been rasterized but of course because we still have our text layer so if we wanted to change the text we uh, we could still do that and in fact actually let's do that so we'll go get the text and let's type something else so let's go back to our um, keyboard and I want to type something else because I want to show you the next feature so now we're going to type 100% and the reason why I'm typing it you will see in a second. So now the next feature that I would like to show you is the ability to share layers. So the way that shared layers work is that um, you have the ability to export every single layer in your layers panel that's visible as its own image. So if we go to um, share you'll see here that that we have different file formats available for share layers. So we've got PDF, PNG files, and animated GIF. So if I was going to export this now, let's say as a PDF, what that means is every one of these layers that's visible, well, at the moment, if I've only got actually this layer visible, will get exported as a page in a PDF document. This can be really useful. For example, um, I, I like to take notes for work with Procreate. So if I take a lot of notes, I just create a new layer and then I start scribbling again. But it can be difficult because then you have to go back in and you have to turn on the visibility and export your page as JPEG and then turn it off and, and then the next one and so on. But now what I can 
can do. I can just keep scribbling and then it, in the end when I'm finished, I can export um, every single layer as a PDF document, which is super handy. I could also do PNG files if I wanted to, if it's sketches or where I just need individual files. But the cool thing is the animate GIF and that's what I'm going to show you what we can do with this. So now we've got our um, text layer here, but we actually want this to be rasterized. So I'll tap here and I can just tap rasterize and now you can see that um, it's been rasterized. I don't want this one anymore, so I'm going to delete this. But for this one here, what we're going to do now, um, we're going to duplicate this layer four times. And I'm duplicating it four times because I want every one of these individual characters to be on a separate layer. So the first layer, so I'm going to turn them all off. And the first layer is only going to have the one. So I just delete all my other letters. Okay, let's choose a brush that's a bit easier to delete with. This one here. Okay, so I delete everything except for the one so this is going to be the first frame in my animated gif okay and then we'll turn on the second one and so for the second one we want to have um, the one and the zero that's going to be the second frame of my animation and then on the third one we'll have the one and the two zeros and then um, the fourth frame is going to have everything but so now let's add, actually let's duplicate this one more. And what I want to do is I want to add some lines as well. So now I'm going to just choose a different brush. Let's see. Um, I'm going to choose this brush here. So I just want to make this line like that. Okay, and then we'll duplicate it again. And we'll make another line. Alright, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six layers. Now let's turn the visibility of all of them back on. And now let's see what happens if we export this. So share and then animate the GIF. And now you can see here a little bit of a preview of our animation. And now we can export this. So if you want this to be visible on your iPad, make sure that you choose Web Ready. So I tap Web Ready and it's exporting it and then I can just save this image to my camera roll. And now let's see what it looks like. And there it is. So this is how easy it is to make an animated GIF with Procreate. Of course there's many many more options of making these animated GIFs but this is just a really quick way of how you can do this. Now we have some other cool features that I would like to show you as well and, and one of them is the solo visibility and that's actually really handy. You can see now we have all of these layers activated but maybe I just wanted to see one of the layers and turn all the other ones off and of course I could just you know unselect them and then maybe only keep this layer here and it's a little bit tedious especially if I want to turn them all back on. But now what you can do is you can hold down the visibility button here. So if you hold this down, then all the other layers get turned off and only this layer um, stays visible. So if I want to undo this, I can just tap again and then the visibility of all the layers comes, comes back right there. And then another new feature that we have is that there is new blend modes and you'll find these in um, the contrast so that there is um, more blend modes to choose from and this is pretty much um, to be aligned more with Photoshop so it's got now the same exact same blend modes that you will find in Photoshop as well. And then the last new feature that I would like to show you is a feature that you can find in the brush settings, which is the smoothing slider here under the Apple Pencil Pressure. Now this is a feature that is really useful for illustrators. I don't find it very useful for lettering artists, so it's least not for myself. So pretty much what this does, it smooths out the streamlined setting that you have here on the brush. I just want to quickly show you how this works. So we've got our smoothing turned off, which means the brushes work exactly the way they've always worked. So now let's write hello maybe. And you can see this is just exactly the way it was, the way we like it. 
nice streamline and we've got our thick and thin strokes so now what happens if we turn this smoothing on I'm just going to turn it on to the max of course you don't have to um, turn it all the way up but I'll show you what happens and why I don't like it so much so now it's kind of got this weird behavior where it's kind of smoothing out the streamline but it actually also sort of adjusts the, the thickness so for me it doesn't seem to be that useful but you might find that it helps you but I would leave it turned off and I'm actually not going to adjust any of my brushes I don't find this useful for lettering but now let's have a look at a brush that is a monoline brush like for example the totally crispy brush I'm using this for doodling or little illustrations and if we turn on the smoothing here And that just makes it a little bit easier to do these types of lines so you don't notice the rubber band effect too much. And there we have it. These are all the new features of Procreate 4.3. Make sure to leave a comment and let me know which one of these new features you like the most. And also give me a thumbs up. But make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss another one of my tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.